In the epistle reading that we just heard, St. Paul says some words that are very familiar to us. He says that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am first. These are words that we say every Sunday in our prayer before Holy Communion. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners of whom I am first. But what exactly is St. Paul getting at when he calls himself the first of sinners? St. John Chrysostom has this interpretation. He says, we bring to mind how the holy apostle Paul recounts his transgressions and puts his soul in the last and nethermost place, saying, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am first. When and at what time did he say this? After great struggles, after mighty works, after the preaching of the gospel of Christ, which he proclaimed throughout the whole world, after continual deaths and manifold tribulations which he suffered, he saw himself as still making a beginning. So Paul writes to Timothy, his protege, uh, a spiritual son, this young bishop offering him advice on how to lead a community. Now in Acts, we learn that Timothy joins Paul's company during his second missionary journey. So that means that when Paul is writing this, he is already a well-established church leader. And yet in this reading, he speaks of himself as really being even less than a seeker or than an inquirer. I am the first of sinners. And this reminded me of something that once I heard from Mother Macrina, one of the nuns at Holy Dermission Monastery up in Rives Junction, Michigan. Mother Macrina, uh, back in the day, was uh, a commercial realtor in, Detro in the Detroit area. And one day she visited Dormition Monastery and she just never went back. That was it. And her life totally changed by that. And she had been there for, for decades. And I remember somebody once commented to her how long she'd been at the monastery from that time that she had this life-changing decision. She, oh, you've been here for so long. And Mother Macrina said, oh no, I'm really just getting started. See, this is what spiritual healing, this is what spiritual growth feels like, subjectively. As we grow, we become much more aware of where we are at with God and how much further there is to go. You know how the truth sets us free, right? Well, one of the things that the truth sets us free from is self-delusion and denial. So the more we grow in Christ, the more we realize that there's so much more work to be done, that things that didn't really matter to us in our past suddenly become much more urgent for us to pay attention to in our present. That's what it looks like. But that's okay. Because that happens within the context of our trust in God's promises and our belief in His unfailing love for us. So in the reading today, Paul says, I am the first of sinners, and then he goes on to say, but on that very account, I was dealt with mercifully. So it's never about simply looking at our own brokenness and imperfections, but it is always about looking at them within the context of the possibility that God has to heal us when we turn to him for his grace and his mercy. And so we hold these two realities always in the balance, that we still have a long way to go in our healing, and that's okay because God is patient and merciful. And beyond that even, ultimately, it does not matter how far we've traveled, 
It only matters that we are heading in the right direction. Because another thing that we say in that communion prayer is, like the thief, while I confess you, remember me, Lord, in your kingdom. The thief's walk with Christ, his journey towards the kingdom, what, was 15 minutes, half an hour? And he received that promise, today you will be with me in paradise. When we say that prayer in the liturgy, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. We place ourselves in the place of the seeker who was just ready to take their first steps. And that's a good place to be. And that's a healthy and honest place to be. And in that position, we set our intention to move forward, always trusting in the goodness of God and his ability to heal all that is broken within us and to complete all that which is lacking within us. And so what we can say is the thing that St. Anthony the Great said, the founder of Christian monasticism, the great, he gets the title. And one of his most famous sayings is this, every day I say to myself, today I will make a beginning. And to God be all glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen.